The markets have been falling from its highs from December 2021 and we are looking at a recessionary environment where there are so many good companies at extremely cheap prices. Today we are going to discuss how to find the fair value of a stock in the same way that Warren Buffett does. Well, intrinsic value is what is the number that if you were all knowing about the future and could predict all the cash that a, a business would give you between now and Judgment Day, discounted at the proper discount rate, that number is what the intrinsic value of business is. So what Warren Buffett does is he uses a discount cash flow model. So what I'm gonna do is start with an example. So this is a simple Excel spreadsheet template that I've created. Uh, don't be worried about the numbers as of now. I'll explain to it uh, in very simple English so you guys can understand it as easy as possible. Um, you can download this template from the description box so you guys can play around with it and put in any numbers, put in any stock data and get the intrinsic value calculator. Okay, so let's start with these for discount rate, growth rate. We're gonna ignore all these things as of now. Just We're just gonna do the ticker, which is basically Apple. We're gonna focus on Apple stock as of now. Uh, the share price and the outstanding shares can be got from any data feed. I use QuickFS and also Guru Focus. There's also Google Finance and Yahoo Finance and many other information. So if you can go to Guru Focus and go to ownership, you will get the number of shares outstanding, which is what I have plugged in here, and obviously the share price as well. So if you can go into the cash flow statement, you've seen the cash flow from operations. So if I can go to the quick FS and then go to cash flow statement. So quick FS is free, so you can get all these data for free. So I've taken the past five years data of cash from operations, that's right here, and pasted it to here. And then is CapEx, which is short form for capital expenditure, which is basically uh, expense of the property, plant and equipment. I've taken that one and I have pasted here, which is an expense. And then free cash flow is basically the difference of this one and this one. Since already it's negative value, I just have to put in some here. So 77 minus 13 gives you 64 and that is basically our free cash flow. So this is a free cash flow slash discount cash flow model and growth rate of the free cash flow is basically the final value divided by the first value to the power of the number of years. So this one we have taken five years uh, minus one and that gives you the growth rate. So we've also got the earnings, which is a net income, which again, I've copied from the income statement. Um, if you just go down in the net income statement, you can get the values here. So we're not gonna use much about the earnings or the net income, but I'll come back to why we have copy pasted this so you guys can use it later. So what's the dis difference between a cash flow and earnings? So basically cash flow is like the actual cash that comes and goes through you. Uh, so let's say your boss pays you 10,000 pounds this month. He, on paper, he might have paid 10,000 pounds, so that will be reflected in the earnings, but on theory, I mean, practically, he probably might not have paid it. Like he might have just given you 8,000 pounds and told you, hey, mate, I'm going to pay you back um, next week or something like that, the rest 2,000 pounds. So the cash flow will show 8,000 pounds has come into your wallet and 2,000 pounds is yet to come. So that is why people, including Warren Buffett and value investors like Bill Ackman and Charlie Munger and everybody focus on the cash flow because that shows the actual amount that has come and gone. Um, so cash flow from operations is like if you're running a restaurant, whatever money you made from the restaurant, from the sales of the restaurant, that is the cash flow from operations. Cash flow from financing activities will be whatever came from like banking or uh, you know loans and debts and all those things that comes from the cash from financing and then cash from investing is basically you know the capital expenditure or acquisitions and investments and all those things um, so we will just be focusing on cash from operations and capex and the growth rate um, so now i'm going to put in the final free cash flow here 11443 equals to this one here okay uh, so we've got that value as a year one free cash flow. So what is the present value of it after one year? So what happens is that every year, the purchasing power of your $100 or whatever you have goes down. So let's say you have $100 today. That $100 10 years from now is not worth $100. It might be worth just one third that value. And that's where the discount rate comes into perspective. So that is basically you take this one and you divide it by that discount rate. So one plus... 
to the power it's just one year so after year one the free cash flow is going to be that so 101 so you can see the number has reduced from 111 to 101.311.82 so i'm going to do a small uh, tip for you guys i'm just going to put in dollar here so because our discount rate is a constant so we've got the free cash flow here and you've got the present value which is a discounted value of the free cash flow so what happens in year two is that every company goes through a growth rate and that's what we've calculated here we've got roughly 0 0.11 which is basically 12 percent so i put in growth rate of 12 percent for the first five years and growth rate of 12 percent for the rest five years as well um, so what happens is that this free cash flow will grow next year. So all I need to do is one plus dollar, one plus this one here, and that's it. I'm just going to give in a dollar sign, just to put that a constant. So the first five years, the growth rate is pretty much. Uh, I forgot to put the asterisk here. So next year, the year free cash flow will be 124,000. I mean, just gonna do this for the next five years. So let's see if it has gone through well. Yeah, 139, 156, 175. So from year six, we're gonna use another value. So I'm just gonna put this one here. And instead of B7, it is going to be B8. Gonna drag all this thing down. And basically you have got the free cash flow for the next years. So obviously the present value has to be reflected as well. So I'm gonna drag this down as well. So there you go, so you've got the present value. So you can see that 300,000, which we're gonna receive 10 years from now, is basically just 119,000 uh, when you factor in the discount rate. Um, then what we need to do is we need to do, we can keep on doing this for the next 10 years, 11 years, 15 years, 20 years. So there's no point doing it continuously for a substantial long time. So what we do is that we take the final value and we multiply it with the terminal value. That is number 10. So this can be 15, 20 or five or eight it's up to you. Universities have done lots of research. We're just going to take a rough measure of 10 as of now. Uh, it depends on your risk metric which we'll discuss in a bit we also need the present value of that one as well so i'm going to drag that one into the present value so we've got this one value here and all we need to do is we just need to sum all these things and we will get the intrinsic value of the company so that's the intrinsic value of the company so intrinsic share price will be this divided by outstanding shares so there you go, the intrinsic share price that we have calculated is $144. So what's the current price? Current price is basically the share price now. It's no difference. So what's the 50% margin of safety? That is the intrinsic share price divided by two, okay? So we've actually done with our valuation. You can see how simple the valuation is. It's just putting in numbers in there and just calculating the values. So now comes the other thing about conservative uh, methodology and more of a progressive or a growth kind of a mentality kind of thing. So if you can see this terminal value, if I increase this number, then the intrinsic value calculation goes higher. So if I keep it lower, then the intrinsic value goes lower. So you need to have like a smooth kind of a measure. So I like to keep it at 10, but again, it's up to you. So if it's a company is kind of like a risky company, it's better off you become more conservative. And if it's not so risky company, then you can go more higher numbers as well. So same thing goes for growth rates. You can see the growth rate is 12%. Uh, so that's our rough estimate calculation. So I can change these values as well. So we've calculated the 12% growth rate from the past five years. So you can do it for the past 10 years, or you can also get some kind of a subjective uh, kind of an assessment because in the past 12 years, we've, got, we've been, past five years, we've been through quite a lot. We've been through the coronavirus. So that has affected the economy and all those things. So economy has been in a difficult situation. So we can assume that this 12% might be a bit uh, underestimating the growth. So if I put in like 20%, you can see the intrinsic share price suddenly goes to $185, you know. Um, so you can play around with these growth rate numbers, but that is up to you really. Um, I would like to put it at 12% right now, but you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, so roughly our intrinsic share price is $144. So according to Warren Buffett, he likes investing in good companies. I mean, note the word good companies at fair value. So at the present moment with our valuation, Apple is kind of in a fair value. So buying this company could be a good idea. So on the other hand, if you are investing in a company which is young, like a growth company, 
then I wouldn't recommend investing in a fair value. I would say you might as well invest in a 50% margin of safety, you know, so you have that um, room for error, that margin for error, uh, so that all these calculations can be wrong and still there is room for you guys to improve. Uh, for example, Monish Prabhra is a huge, um, huge advocate for like a massive margin of safety. So there are lots of value investors out there who really, really prefer the margin of safety. But in order to prefer the margin of safety, you need to know how to calculate the intrinsic value. And that's what this video is all about, to calculate the intrinsic value. Um, now, coming back to the earnings. So why have I put in the earnings as well? So sometimes, especially young companies, their cash flow from operations might be negative because they are spending lots of money and uh, so for example i have a restaurant and i'm expanding the restaurant so whatever money i'm getting from the cash flow from operations i will be spending it on more property and plants and i'll be expanding the restaurant from one city to another city so my free cash flow can be negative so in that case uh, calculating the free cash flow model will be a difficult thing to do because we have all got negative values in here so in that case using the net income will be far more uh, ideal. So for instance, if you go to Netflix, so Netflix had a negative cash flow uh, a few years back. So if I can go Netflix, you can look at cash flow from operations, you can see there's a bit of a negative value here. So during that time, it's better off uh, buying, I mean, assessing your uh, statements by using the earnings and putting the earnings final number here. Uh, you also don't need to put the final values of the free cash flow or the net income. You can actually take an average of this again. That'll be like a conservative way of doing it. Or you can subtract, uh, you know, 20, 30 percent of the final value. These are all subjective. You can change around. You can play around with all these things. But this is just the uh, theoretical form of calculating the discount cash flow model. It's all about adjusting your numbers based on your risk profile. Now, just alone doing this is not enough. You need to calculate, you need to find out the return on invested capital, you need to assess the debt to equity, you need to understand the retained earnings growth rate, um, you need to also know whether the company has got a depreciation asset, like for example any of the manufacturing companies they tend to have higher capex, so every year they'll have to spend a huge considerable amount of money on expanding their factories or maintaining their factories, but some companies they don't need to, for example, the reason why Warren Buffett likes Moody's is simply because they ba barely have any capex. So you need to assess not just the intrinsic value, but everything from the debt, from the ownership, from the increase in the growth rate of the sales, the revenue, all these things uh, factor in while choosing a company. But this is just a simple template for you guys to calculate the intrinsic value. So I have made a pretty decent amount in the value-based investing the past few months. In this month alone, uh, I made 24% return. That's for this year. And there's been one month. So I was able to buy a lot of cheap stock, especially made some great returns in Netflix and in, um, I think, Adobe as well. So these two are the uh, big ones that I have performed well. So as you can see, I blurred out some of the things, the total value. Um, you can see this is a real account. Uh, uh, the number is here. So um, I've also got a quantitative based fund as well. So either way, if you do value based investing or quant based investing, it involves lots of work. It's just not, um, you know, it's not that easy. If quant based in trading is involves lots of coding and lots of mathematical analysis, uh, value based investing involves a lot, a lot of reading. So you have to read a considerable amount of books and financial statements and annual reports try to find out small things like contingent liabilities and things like that because those kind of uh, factors play a huge factor in choosing a company you need to understand the management does the management have any fraudulent behavior and all those things will factor in while doing a value-based investing so having a great portfolio of both value-based investing and a quant-based investing would be a great idea there are lots of data available out there lots of information available out there and i hope this video will give you the foundations on how to calculate the intrinsic value so what i'm going to do in the future is i'll i'll do a balance sheet and also a income statement and cash flow statement analysis so you guys can understand how uh, how to read these statements much effectively so I hope you guys enjoy this video have a great great day